at the meeting point of the Mediterranean and the Atlantic, where the mountains of North Africa rise so sharply that sunrise seems to move between continents, lies Andalusia. Seen from afar, the land looks eternal. Sunlit plains, olive groves, whitewashed towns and ancient harbors. But beneath that brightness is a deeper truth. Andalusia is one of Europe's oldest crossroads, a place where migrations never stopped, where each civilization left something behind in stone, in language, and even in the DNA carried by the people who live here today. Every cave, every peak, every ruined fortress, every forgotten port contains a trace of the worlds that passed through this land. The story begins with Ice Age foragers. Genetic traces show that many carried the U5 and U4 maternal lines and the I2 paternal lineage, markers of Europe's earliest surviving hunter-gatherers. Their skin was darker than that of later Europeans, yet some had striking blue eyes, a combination common in the deep Paleolithic. These were small coastal bands who harvested shellfish, hunted deer, and learned every curve of Andalusia's changing shorelines. Their world lives on in stone. In Cueva de Ardales, red hand stencils cling to the walls. In Cueva de Nerja, torches once illuminated animal figures painted in ochre and black. At El Bajondillo, flint blades and bone tools reveal a rhythm of life shaped by the sea. They built no monuments, but their hands remain pressed into rock long after their bodies vanished from the earth. Around 5,500 BC, new families arrived by sea from Anatolia and the Eastern Mediterranean. They brought domesticated cereal crops, herds of goats and cattle, polished stone axes, woven textiles, and ceramic traditions known as cardial pottery. Their G2 are paternal lines and maternal markers, like K1, J1, and T2 blended with the older hunter ancestry rather than replacing it. Physically, they were shorter than the steppe herders who would come later with mostly brown eyes and medium light skin. These farmers reshaped the landscape. They built megalithic tombs aligned to mountains and solstices. The Dolmen de Menga, facing the sacred profile of Peña de los Enamorados, stands as one of Europe's largest burial monuments. The nearby Dolmen de Vieira and El Romeral show engineering precision and ritual planning. Their chambers echoing with the ceremonies of early agrarian life. In places like De Hacilla, offerings of pottery and bone reveal a belief system tied to harvest cycles and ancestral memory. As the Copper Age matured, Andalusia witnessed one of Europe's most significant population shifts. Between 2500 and 2000 BC, groups carrying R1BM269 and its western branch R1BP312 reached Iberia, descendants of migrations that began in the Pontic Caspian steppe. Their numbers were small, yet their impact was transformative. They tended to be taller, with lighter skin tones and more frequent light eyes, and they introduced new social structures, horse and cart traditions, enhanced metal weaponry, and individual elite burials. 
In Andalusia, their ancestry blended with local farmers and older hunter-gatherer lines, helping create societies defined by fortification and metallurgy. Los Milares developed into a proto-urban center with concentric walls and copper workshops. While the El Agar culture rose in the southeast, building hilltop towns and producing distinctive bronze weapons and pottery. This era shaped the genetic foundation of later Iberian populations through the rise of the DF-27 lineage. By the late Bronze Age, Andalusia became the heart of Tartessos, one of the earliest complex societies of Western Europe. Their ancestry was a blend of local Iberian, early farmer, and steppe-derived components. They likely looked similar to modern Iberians, intermediate skin tones, mostly brown hair with occasional light eyes. The treasure of El Carambolo, found near Sevilla, displays gold craftsmanship of extraordinary skill. The fortified town of Tejada la Vieja reveals planned streets and workshops. Tartessos rose early and mysteriously disappeared, but its metals, its script, and its artistic language live on in the archaeological layers of the southwest. Around 1100 BC, Phoenician navigators from the Levant reached Andalusia's shores, carrying lineages such as J2, J1, and EM34. They settled among Iberian communities, introducing alphabetic writing, advanced shipbuilding, iron tools, glass production, and the famous Tyrian purple dye that symbolized royal power across the ancient world. they founded some of the oldest continuously inhabited cities in Western Europe. Gadir, today Cadiz. Malacca, now Malaga. Sexy, the modern Almunieca. And Abdera, the town we know as Adra. At Cerro del Vilar, archaeologists uncovered the remains of a busy port settlement. And in the necropolis of Triamar, Eastern-style chamber tombs still preserve the memory of the people who built them. The Phoenicians transformed Andalusia's economy, creating maritime networks that connected this coast with the entire Mediterranean. Their gods faded, but their city names and their harbors remain alive. When Rome absorbed southern Iberia, it turned Andalusia into Baetica, one of the empire's most productive provinces. Italian settlers brought additional Mediterranean lineages, R1BU152, J2, E1B1B, and T, blending smoothly into an already diverse population. Physically, they resembled local Iberians, though lighter hair and eye tones became slightly more common in urban centers. Betica's olive oil was so crucial that millions of amphorae were shipped north, forming Rome's Monte Testaccio, a mountain of broken jars that still stands today. The Roman grid survives beneath the streets of Cordoba, Sevilla, and Malaga. Italica, birthplace of emperors Trajan and Hadrian, preserves mosaics, baths, and an amphitheater. Bailo Claudia, near Tarifa, remains one of the best preserved Roman towns in Spain, with fish sauce factories, temples, and market squares. Rome brought law, roads, aqueducts, public architecture, and large agricultural estates that shaped the Andalusian countryside for centuries.
As Rome weakened, a new power entered the peninsula. The Visigoths, originally from regions north of the Danube, brought with them the northern European lineages I1, I2, A2, and R1B U106. They were often described as tall, fair-haired, and fair-skinned compared to the local population. But their numbers were modest, and the majority of Andalusia's inhabitants remained Hispano-Roman. The Visigoths contributed not through mass migration, but through administration, law, and early Christian architecture. Their rule ended with the Muslim arrival in 711, but a faint Germano-Iberian imprint survived in certain lineages and early medieval institutions. With the arrival of Berber and Arab forces, Andalusia stepped into a new world of cultural fusion. The land began to be called Al-Andalus, a name whose origin still carries a trace of mystery. Most scholars link it to Vandalicia, the land of the Vandals, softened and reshaped through Arabic into Al-Andalus. Others see a deeper echo, a word early Arab geographers used for the far western shores of the Atlantic world. Whichever path it followed, the name came to define a frontier of knowledge and light. New lineages entered the population, EM81 from North Africa, J1 and J2 from the Near East, and maternal lines like U6 and M1. The newcomers often had olive skin, dark hair, and Near Eastern features, blending quickly with long-established Iberian families. Al-Andalus soon rose as one of Europe's great scientific centers. Scholars shaped algebra, astronomy, and medicine. Engineers expanded irrigation through acequias and norias, while farmers introduced citrus, rice, sugarcane, cotton, and pomegranates. Artisans created silk, carved stucco, and endless geometric patterns. And this era left Andalusia its most iconic monuments. The Mezquita of Cordoba, Medina Azahara, the Alcazabas, the Giralda, and the Alhambra, where water and geometry turn architecture into poetry. Between the 13th and 15th centuries, Christian kingdoms reclaimed Andalusia. They built cathedrals over former mosques, fused Gothic and Mudejar styles, and repopulated cities with settlers from Castile, Leon, Galicia, and Navarre. Surnames like Mendoza, Gallego, Castro, Navarro, and Guzman entered the region during this time. Meanwhile, Jewish communities who had contributed scholars, traders, physicians, and poets were expelled in 1492. The Moriscos, descendants of Muslims who converted to Christianity, faced expulsion in 1609. These traumatic events reshaped the cultural landscape, but only partially altered the genetic one. The Andalusian genome remained layered rather than replaced. Today, Andalusians carry ancestry from every civilization that stepped onto this land. Hunter-gatherers, Neolithic farmers, steppe migrants, Tartessian elites, Phoenician traders, Roman colonists, Visigothic nobles, Arab scholars, Berber soldiers, Sephardic Jewish families, and Christian settlers from the north. Even surnames preserve this deep layering. Names like Garcia, Sanchez, Lopez, Martinez, and Munoz reflect the Romanized Iberian foundations. Names such as Alcala, Alcantara, Medina, 
Benjumea, Almodova, carry the memory of Al-Andalus. Jewish families left names like Toledano, Cordovero, Benaroch, and Abarbanel. Northern settlers brought Castro, Navarro, Mendoza, Serrano, and Guzman. And names tied to ancient towns, Baena, Carmona, Ronda, Quesada, Gaditano, Sexitano, reach back to Iberian, Phoenician, and pre-Roman roots. Every name is a fossil. Every family records a chapter of the land's long memory. If you want more journeys like this, where genetics, archaeology, and history meet, subscribe. Andalusia still has many stories to tell.